lines coming fast and thick, really a quickly moving situation. But I do want to get your initial thought on this. Bank of Russia, again, their key rate is moving to 20%, had been a 9.5%. They're saying that this is necessary to make deposits attractive. What's your initial thought on that? It's an extraordinary move. Yeah. I think it shows you just the, the significance of this event. Um, that's that's a, a, a bigger hike than we saw in December 2014, um, when which is one of the, the more recent analogs we can look back to. Um, it's, it's really an extraordinary uh, action by the central bank. Well, also, there's this question of reserves at the central bank, what's mm -hmm. accessible for them, what's not accessible for them after this weekend. What's the current read on that? I think those are still unknowns mm -hmm. um, and, and very important unknowns. Uh, we also don't know what kind of workarounds they have. Uh, potentially to uh, you know, work with other countries uh, to establish swap lines. I, I think the, the broader question is not just whether the central bank uh, you know, could run out of reserves um, in, in a situation like that. It's, it's what's, what's the confidence in the broader uh, hmm. financial sector. Um, I think you know, that, that, that could be a bigger issue for them at this point. And as we see this, this, 20%, uh, this, this hike to 20% is, um, is obviously an attempt to restore confidence. Right. Do they, what, so you mentioned some of the levers that they have, this hike to 20% being, being one of them. What are those? Is, is it mainly just looking to other countries to help with their FX reserves? Uh, well, there's been a huge demand uh, for cash. Obviously, we saw right. queues at ATMs over the weekend. Um, the ruble is, uh, is, has, is plunging in offshore markets. Um, so I think, you know, when, when we look at their, their options at this point, um, you know, some, some form of capital controls. Uh, we've already seen uh, restrictions on foreigners selling Russian assets. Mm. Um, so we could see more of that. Um, so it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean this, this continues as a run on the banks because there could be capital controls that would, would step in. When you look at contagion risks, what, how are those likely to evolve? If you can look into your crystal ball, what are the wider implications from Russia emanating to the larger global economy? I think at this point, the, the main uh, channels for, for disruption of the global economy would be energy prices and then a, a global uh, you know, risk-off scenario. Um, we were, uh, last week, even ahead of these, these, um, these, these latest sanctions, we were looking at uh, three scenarios. And, and one would be um, something a little bit like what markets have priced in last week, um, where you see, um, I, think, I think there were expectations of a of relatively uh, you know, brief uh, uh, crisis that, that could see energy prices stabilize. Mm. Um, but uh, with these additional actions, I think we're looking more uh, at our second scenario, which is uh, you know, you know, more severe disruption. There's potential for disruption to the energy market. Uh, I think we've already seen some signs of uncertainty over, over supply, but to, to a limited degree. Um, and, and I think in that scenario, we're looking at uh, more inflationary pressure in Europe and the US. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the um, you know, economy is running off track, um, but it, it certainly raises the risk of a downturn in Europe. For the US, it's a little bit more removed. And so I think we're, we're, we're looking at um, still in, in that second scenario, we might, might still see uh, you know, a Fed rate hike in March. Mm. Um, the more extreme scenario is more disruption to energy markets. It, it, it is really a, a complicated proposition because so many of your inputs need to change. Um, you have perhaps a move to change the energy sector as a whole, remove their reliance. You have Germany and all of Europe potentially spending more on defense. How do those factors, how have those factors changed the longer term economic outlook for you and the team when it comes to Europe? Well, I think these are, are really longer term um, questions. And, and, and I think it, that's, that's going to be a little bit more slow, slow mm. moving. You know, at the moment, events are moving very, very fast as we try to uh, you know, get, uh, get a hold on, on what's happening.